Welcome everybody to chesslecture.com. This is your host, International Master John Paul Wallace. I have been reading an interesting book uh, from just got it from the local library, Gary Kasparov, How Life Imitates Chess. And uh, I was really impressed by this book, so I wanted to share some of my thoughts with you, and I've decided to also make it into a series by focusing on the, the chess aspects of this book. But basically, what Kasparov's done here, which I think is, is an over, it's long overdue that a world champion has done this, um, is Kasparov's written a book basically relating chess to life, to military strategy, to business strategy, and uh, all sorts of things that can come up, whether you're a CEO or just a regular person um, doing your normal thing. For example, applying for jobs. He looks at you know that decision making, uh, prioritizing, or whether it's a much bigger decision, uh, which might be deciding to go into war and how you would approach that. Now, in our first lecture, we're going to take a look at the first game that Kasparov uh, relates to which is his game against Fedorov, which was played in YKNZ in 2001. And he gives this game as an example of, a, of his opponent using a strategy that was flawed. And it was fundamentally flawed. And what I mean by that is that it, it wasn't a case of Fedorov making specific errors so much as his overall concept wasn't sound. Now, in Kasparov's book, it's on page 24, he, he, um, he says the following. It's under the title, The Future of the Decisions You Make in the Present. The strategist starts with a goal in the distant future and works backwards towards the present. A grandmaster makes the best moves because they are based on what he wants the board to look like 10 or 20 moves in the future. This doesn't require the calculation of countless 20 move variations. He evaluates where his fortunes lie in the position and establishes objectives. Then he works out the step-by-step -step moves to accomplish these aims. With it, okay, and he basically says too often, a bit later, too often we set a goal and head straight for it without considering all the steps that will be required to achieve it. What conditions must be true for our strategy to succeed? What sacrifices will be required? What must change and what we can do to induce or enable those changes? goes on to say, I first must understand which strategic objectives will help me to accomplish my goal of, for example, attacking the king, and only then do I begin to plan exactly how to achieve them and to look for the specific moves that will lead to successful implementation. And this is the key right now, for at least for today's lecture. Failing to do this leads to simplistic, single-minded plans with little hope of success. He goes on to talk about our featured game. In the second round of the 2001 Chorus Tournament in the Netherlands, I faced one of the tournament's underdogs, Alexei Fedorov of Belarus. This was the strongest tournament he had ever played in and the first time we met at the board. He quickly made it clear that he did not intend to show too much respect for the august surroundings or for his opponent. Fedorov quickly abandoned standard opening play. If what he played against me had a name, it might be called the kitchen sink attack. Ignoring the rest of the board, he launched all of his available pawns and pieces at my king right from the start. I knew that such a wild, ill-prepared attack could only succeed if I blundered. I kept an eye on, on my king and counted on the other side or wing and in the center of the board, a critical area where he had completely ignored his development. It was soon apparent that his attack was entirely superficial and he resigned the game after only 25 moves. Okay. Now let's take a look at what this meant in practice. So we're going to take a look at this game. Fedorov Kasparov, Chorus 2001 in, in Holland, Wykenzie. OK, 
Okay, Federer played E4. Uh, it's quite interesting that Kasparov described Federer, Federer playing this uh, kitchen sink attack because um, that's probably quite similar to Federer's natural style anyway, so it might not just be a case of doing that because he was playing Kasparov or perhaps because he was intimidated. Um, Fedorov actually played the King's Gambit as an example and that's extremely rare at the elite level or basically unheard of at the elite level Spassky probably um, but although he's not like around at the top these days but he used to play it and Bronstein but these days meaning the last two decades almost unheard of except for Fedorov so e4, c5, Kasparov plays his favourite. And d3. Well, this is already out of book. Or certainly out of the main lines. Uh, it's basically aiming for a closed setup. Now, don't, don't start thinking that there's anything wrong with d3. Actually, it's completely fine. Um, if anything, it's maybe a little bit passive. But so far, Fedorov hasn't done anything wrong. This is just a a sort of quiet system that seems to show that he's scared of Kasparov's theory in the night off. So knight c6, g3. All Fedorov is doing is playing a black system. This is a system that you you would play against the English. If you imagined white had played c4 and black had played e5, knight c3 and then black plays d6 and then g6 and a king's Indian setup. This is what Fedorov is doing with an extra tempo. It partly shows a little bit of fear against Kasparov, but on the other hand, um, Kasparov has not always had a, had a great record against the close Sicilian. Spassky used to play the close Sicilian with success against Kasparov. So Bishop G2, Bishop G7, F4. This is the correct way, in my opinion, F4, because it's the most aggressive. I think it's a mistake to play knight f3 if you can play f4 first. d6, knight f3. Now this system that Federer is playing is a system Kasparov himself has used with success when playing black against the English. Knight f6, castles, castles. Now in this position knight c3 is the most common or normally that would even be played earlier. Um, it does have the added benefit of um, stopping black playing b5 straight away. Of course, black will get b5 in pretty quickly with rook b8, b5, but and then play b4. But your knight can always go to e2. 